Java Part 2 Redo. Okay, first couple things I'm going to mention. Uh, leaving off from that last video, I made three mistakes to reminder that, that you may not have picked up on. One, uh, for that uh, screen resolution holding configuration file, uh, it's, it's a file, it's not a folder, and it's called dot x profile and not just x profile. Uh, later on I show that but I don't really make it exactly clear and where I say that I end up being wrong, yeah Pulse is in the mix Java's trying to use Alza but Pulse has the sound and Alza doesn't or it's Alza can't pass the sound but Pulse can anyway uh, the bottom line is, is that uh, there's a library file that needs to be renamed and it's called lib 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 and I'll get to it later on in the presentation uh, libjsoundalza.so and if you if you rename that to something Java doesn't expect to um, to use or find then Pulse will just work without the Alza plugin so I'm really kind of confused as to where Pulse um, comes in comes into all this maybe Pulse is able to um, interact with uh, Java as if it were the open source sound system? I don't know the answer to that, but it seems like it's not a simple matter of um, of the diagram that I, that I had before, where it was Alza to Pulse or Pulse to Alza, and then one of those imitating, I think that Alza is out of the mix, or maybe Alza is further back behind Pulse, and because ALS is behind Pulse, uh, if you have an ALS plugin, it's going to reach back to where ALS is, but Pulse won't let you take it. I don't know. It's, anyway, that's the <laughs> that situation is all I know is what works. And now I'm just going to go over what I did. I had a I had a presentation where it pretty much shows me fumbling around for a long time trying to figure out just what the fuck I needed to do. But the, the, at the end of the day, one of the problems that I had had is that I didn't have the canonical partners um, um, repository available to me for installs and the way I activated that a quick and easy way to do that is if you go into the Ubuntu Software Center and you look for Adobe or actually you just look for Flash and you see that one up there you don't want to use that one you want to use this Adobe Flash Plugin 10. It's very important if you're watching this video uh, not in 2010 and not around September 29th and if you're not using Ubuntu 10.04 why things may things will probably change on you. So you're gonna have to take the information that I give you from these videos and massage it to your own purposes plus look at some of the posts that are out there and try to come up with a solution yourself. I would try the posts first you know if you're if you're watching this in 2011 around you know, September, October, November, December, it's been a whole year. If you're using a, a, a new version, you know, Java 1.7's out now, you know, you never know how it's going to interact. But I'm at least giving you an idea, and at least for the people that are uh, here and now, will have a solution available to them. The next thing I installed, okay, sorry, I digressed. Okay, so when I selected the Adobe Flash Plugin 10, uh, to install it said well you, you can't install this because you don't have the canonical partners activated so it says, do you want to do that and I go well, yeah sure go ahead and do that I activated it I mean, after I activated that I noticed that um, there was a Sun Java not an open JDK and part of the solution that worked for me in this case is that I uninstalled the open GD JDK um, I also uninstalled the Ice-T plugin, and I ended up installing um, the Java OpenG... What? <laughs> okay, I thought I uninstalled that. See, but the problem I'm having right now is that at home, when I tried the solution of changing that, um, that Alza library that I just mentioned, this specific file that's located in um, user library, let's see if I can get that back, I'll show you exactly where that was, if I can 
can get to my point. Okay, so there is a Okay, in this directory, Jerry library. Get to present itself decently. There is a should be there was I hate when this happens. I really do. Okay, okay. Oh. There's an i386 directory. I... I mean, they make this thing so damn confusing. Okay, in this directory, user, library, JVM, Java 6, JRE, live i386, not not user live JVM Java 6 jre live okay in this directory there is a file called live jalza sound so when I renamed that at home it didn't cause sound to to be produced as far as I remember I'm going to try it again later on tonight without doing the other little workaround that was in this thing where you we, we rename the Java file that's in the bin directory. So we'll go there and tell you what that whole thing is about. Okay, right here, there's a, that's an executable file called Java. There are instructions on the web to change. This has never worked for me. I don't recommend it at all. Um, to anybody, I think it's, it's just garbage. Renaming that file called Java to java.bin and then creating your own uh, script file called Java, which whose contents I could ever find it amongst these millions and millions of <laughs> millions of you know, hundreds of pages of people giving solutions out. Stuff that just that doesn't make any sense. Um, <laughs> I guess I wanted to go over this too. You know, you have a whole. There's a really huge problem with um, when something gets out of flow. Here it is. This thing right here is garbage. At least, at least for every solution that I've tried, it doesn't do a damn thing. It's not worth doing. Don't even try it. Okay. So, um, injecting this thing causes Java to freeze and not even start. You don't even have a pogo game. Now, it might work for something else, but for that, no. And people have been incorporating this thing into their solutions. It's this right here. Bin bash, blah, blah, blah. This guy doesn't even really explain it. But uh, the, the solution that's come forth is you can rename that Java to java.bin. You uh, create this as a text file, make it executable, and then you call that Java. So when Java runs, it calls this executable, uh, supposedly uh, inserts pulse audio into the Java, and then it runs, supposedly. Well, that, that, that wasn't the solution. That has nothing to do with the problem that I had. Now, it may have, it, I know it doesn't have anything to do with the problem I had at home, so it's two different desks, two different areas. Now, it may be that I was trying this at the same time I was trying to do that change of library name, and that's why I didn't get the result that I wanted. It could have been that... that the result, the solution I've come up with right here is perfectly good. So I'll, I'll just give you that warning that it may not be good. I'll know later on tonight. <clears throat> I also installed something called um, Library ES. Oh, this thing goes over 15 minutes. I'm going to go nuts. Um, there's so many steps that no one really knows exactly what they did. And it's, it's just so unfortunate. Um, Something called Library E Sound or EOSS or God knows what. Something in here. God, if I could ever find it, I don't even know. But here it is Live ESD Alza Zero. Hopefully, I got that on the screen right. I can't even see my screen. I got so many boxes. Open. It's called Live ESD Alza Zero. 
called Live ESD Alza Zero. Am I getting that? It's not really focused. <laughs> it's L I B E S D slash A L S A Zero slash like this way. <laughs> okay, I also installed that. I also installed the Ubuntu extras. And I thought I made sure to install Sun Java 6 instead of Java, uh, the Open G. DK. Now maybe it's checked off because the 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 Sun Java substitute for it. I also did the Sun Java browser plugin. Yeah, see, there's a Java runtime environment. Now that I know I have installed. And I think this is confusing. This here I don't think is actually installed. I, I when I did the installation, I selected uh, the one down here. And that only appeared after I activated the canonical partners. Then I went in and I changed the name of that library. And then once I did that, I had sound, I didn't have any problems starting, and I was able to isolate that because I had both the, uh, <coughs> the renamed Java binary and the script and that thing renamed, nothing could start, in fact it just crashed on me. And then uh, once I restored my original Java binary to the name Java and got rid of that script, but still had this um, library renamed, then it worked. And so that's how I was able to isolate what the, you know, if figure out maybe if just one of these solutions worked out of the two. You know, and of course, if renaming this didn't work, I'd name it back, and then I would try the the first try kind of solution. And then if both neither of those worked, I know both of those are invalid solutions. I know that the Ice Weasel, <coughs> if you search for a solution for for Java, it's just something about Ice Weasel. It's got nothing to fuck to do with anything. It's an outdated um, uh, way to to carry around your. Uh, GPG key, I, I, I don't know what, what, who the hell was thinking of, the, the person probably thought that changing, I, I, there's no, I don't even know if there's any sound settings in the Ice Weasel configuration file, I couldn't even find it there, it also has nothing to do with etc. A sound, and so between all those things, um, that's how you get your answer.